Welcome everyone to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose, serving others and achieving success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to learn how to do business and life to make an impact in the world. Love to ask this. I want you to think about today, how are you going to serve somebody today? And what's the impact you're going to make with them? And with that being said, impact is a big part of a servant's heart. Who are you mentoring? And my guest today has got something very cool. I just told him in the green room, we've been looking at his videos for about a week. And he's got something here. I really want you to stop what you're doing and listen. Because if you own a business or a solo or entrepreneur, solopreneur, this is going to be very cool for you. Ian, welcome to the show. Steve, thanks so much. I, I love the the theme of it. I think it's so important. Yeah, it's thank you. And that's why you're on, because I really think you're serving people with what you're doing. I want to jump in. You call it video case stories. And on your website, you call that testimonial stink. So you're public about it. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> oh, I mean, the reason, I, I mean, your customer stories are everything, right? And I, I, I tell this story over and over again, but I think it's the most powerful one. Um, and it's at the beginning of my book, but I'm going to, it's a spoiler alert. So if you're going to read the book, maybe you should read the book first. But um, <laughs> so, you know, th there was a guy who um, started a business and he, you know, sat at the front of the business. The guy was already like multi, multi-millionaire, super successful, one of the most famous people in the world. And he started this business. And he sat the, in front of his business and just watched, watched people come into his business. And it was a brand new, like brand new kind of business. And he just watched them, watched them. And he wasn't like, you know, trying to get them to, you know, making sure that the money was there. He wasn't making sure that people weren't stealing. He wasn't counting how many people come in. What he was doing, he was counting how many steps someone took from the time they ate a hot dog wrapper to the time they threw it out. Do you know what that was? <laughs> what? It was Walt Disney. <gasps> wow. So if you go to a Disney World, every 30 steps, there's a trash can. And he actually invented the trash can with the flapper. And so, and the, the point being is that, you know, he could have had someone at the front of the park, someone else at the front of the park doing this. He could have had someone else, you know, just getting like feedback forms, right? But he knew his customer stories. Another story is like one time a person came up to him and said, um, they're like, you know, one of his uh, people said, Walt, you know, the people are walking over the grass right here. We've got, we've got to put up a fence. He's like, no, build a walkway. And he's like, you know, because he listened to his customers, like mm -hmm. listen to them, listen to them. And, you know, up until the day he died, he was listening to his customers. And that's what video case stories do. And testimonials, A, no one cares if, if like, Steve, you seem like an awesome guy. But if I say, hey, Steve's great, you know, it, it could be a good referral. But if I tell a story of like Steve had me on the podcast, it was just an amazing interview. I really felt great about it. It's a whole different story, right? But we so often default to testimonials and then say, Hey, I've got a testimonial. We don't listen to our customers. We don't talk about our customer stories. What's how their life changed, how we impacted them, their families, their community. And that's everything. And that, and not only that, when we do this, our, you'll find, we have a whole process for finding this. You'll find all of your marketing answers, right? Mm -hmm. All of your business answers are in your customer's words. I was just working with a big client, huge multi-million dollar real estate client and going through their SEO. And we like, I'm like, Hey, your all your customers are saying this thing. Why aren't, why don't we have that term anywhere on the website? They're like, well, it's not really what we do. But I'm like, that's what they're saying though. Yeah. And if they're saying that you, you need to market to that. Right. And so inside there, they have the angles. I could say uh, one of my favorite ones is like, uh, you know, um, I could say that this attorney, you know, I'm experienced, right? Every attorney has customer service experience. So we got one case story where a client, um, you know, the clients, his client was injured. It was a personal injury attorney. Now everyone's going to say, oh, I'm experienced customer service, right? Blah, blah, blah. Well, the, the client told the story of the attorney when, when the guy was injured, he like his client was uh, sitting at home depressed because his lawn looked horrible. The attorney came over and mowed his lawn. Now that's customer service. Whoa. Right? And I mean, you'll never forget that, right? You, if I say this, you'll, if you hear about an attorney mowing lawn, you'll remember this story forever. And then like one of my great clients, Vin Citro, 
amazing criminal defense attorney, one of his clients, you know, everyone says that they fight hard, right? Every attorney fights hard. And he goes, oh, Vin, we call him General Vince because every time there, there was a, um, you know, every time we met, it was like he was preparing for battle. And so like, now you'll remember that. And that's, you know, but when you say testimonials and you're like, I'm going to go collect some testimonials, you miss out on all of that stuff. You just skip yeah. over it and you make a video that no one's going to ever watch. Yeah. Or their friends and family that said, oh, look what Steve said. Let's <laughs> dive into this because, and this is a personal question for me as I've gone through your videos. I want more in depth. What's the difference between testimonial and a video case story? And what makes them different? Yeah. So, it, well, a testimonial is general. If I ask you for a testimonial, you're going to send me something about like, hey, his videos are great, blah, blah, blah. Right. A story is about them. It's about the the client, you know, your client, your customer, and their story. What happened? What was going on before in their life? What happened when the the incident happened? If it's if you're a digital agency, you know, or a marketer, what was you know what were the problems that were going on? Not just that they weren't getting leads, but what was that doing to them? You know, what what really what was that? How's that affecting their life? And a testimonial will not have any of that stuff. It might have the results, which yeah. If and also stories generally don't talk about like the situation. There's two reasons that people decide. There's mimetic desire, so it's seeing someone like me. So the more we can convey who that person is, uh, the more we connect with them, the more likely we are to go and listen to them. But also there's um, the situation, right? We decide because of what's going on right now in our lives, mm -hmm. right at this moment. And so the more you can put someone into that situation. And convey the situation, the more the stronger that story is going to resonate. And so, and obviously, a story is a story arc, right? We we think in stories. Uh, I have my good friend Paul Zach. He's been on episode, uh, the show a bunch of times. He's founder of Neuroeconomics. You should have him on. He's amazing. He's actually, I think, pretty close to you too. He's in California. Oh, nice. Uh, Northern California, but he's a really brilliant person. I'll introduce you to him. Let me write that down. Uh, but he, he did this. He did these marketing studies, he developed a thing that senses people's, you know, chemistry in their body. And he was actually drawing blood on people. And he said that like, when there's a strong story arc, at the moment of the, the story arc, if you are to insert a brand and the power of the story arc, the recall is something like 300% or something. And also just having a story, people are more likely to decide positively on anything. So he told the story, and then asked for donations for something completely different. And they had like an 80% increase in donations just by telling yeah, no. a really powerful story, which testimonials are never stories either, right? No. Sorry. Well, I went no, off no, I, 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 <laughs> I was excited for this answer. I didn't want to stop you because so what I'm hearing is a testimonial is about the company, the K video case story about the customer, the client, the even the prospect, how mm -hmm. they felt when they work with the company, whether it's service or product. Am I yep. getting it right? That's, I want to simplify it, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a story, right? It's a yeah. story about that person versus a testimonial. It's just an endorsement, right? Generally, when we ask for a testimonial, you get an endorsement, right? And and that's and it's in the technical sense of the word testimonial, it shouldn't be, but that's what it's become in our lexicon. Yeah. So when you ask for a testimonial, that's more likely what you're going to get. Yeah. I, I just get so many questions in my head spinning because we see testimonials everywhere. Social yep. media is act with them thinking people will draw so i throw a video case story out there i'm going to impact people differently on facebook or linkedin or whatever mm -hmm. than i would with a testimonial so it becomes emotion then oh emotion's everything yeah Talk emotion is everything yep so, so dive deeper into emotion when you say that for the audience you know because hey, you're right. Testimonials don't don't get me off my chair and go, "Wow, this is great." It's like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Yeah, I we can read people's faces and voices, right? And so once if we and that's why we also interview everyone and don't just ask them to tell their story on video because we like you and I having this dynamic. If you'd asked me like just sent me over questions, it'd been a different emotional level, right? Yeah. But we can hear it in their voice. Voices actually imprint on us. So having that voice in there and that emotion in there, we can sense it. You can sense when someone's wavering, when someone's sad, when someone's happy. And so we want to draw that emotion out. And it's so important. That's why you have to have an interview process because people aren't going to get emotional if you just ask them to shoot a video. 
yeah. in general, right? Unless yeah. they've had acting classes, massive amounts of acting classes. And then we, we even see people with massive amounts of acting classes not able to do it. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, well, yeah. go ahead. I no, it's, gonna... it's just, and, and people decide because of emotion, right? Yeah. So we are naturally empathic. So we see someone's emotion, that emotion gets imprinted on us. And, you know, you have a story, you have emotion, you have a point of emotion. That's why movies are great, right? We feel something. And that's what video case stories can do. And and I've seen this and you're like, oh, I don't have any stories. And it's like, you, everyone has a story of someone they transformed. You know, you're selling hot dogs. You maybe save someone's life because they were starving to death. You just have to look for them. You know, it's interesting because you're right. Everybody has a story. My dad used to, he's passing 17, but 91, lived a beautiful full life. But I'd ask him, how are you doing today? He goes, I woke up vertical. That was my dad's <laughs> story. A simple thing, but that was his story. He woke up, God gave him another day. And it could be that simple. It doesn't have to be this enormous video of 20 minutes and talking about this. It could be short and sweet, right? Oh, yeah. You can have one minute stories. Yeah. Right. I was, I'd never been so scared in my life. And then I met Steve, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's emotion there. And it's like, oh, what happened here? And I can draw you in to, to the rest of it. Audience, he's talked me into changing all my testimonials. So I got a little work <laughs> to do next week, but this is great. Yeah. It'll get, get done next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. As of when my guest this week said, Sunday, he says, there's no Sunday. That means it'll never happen. <laughs> So this is great. People are listening going, okay, I'm going to switch, but how can I measure that as a solopreneur or business owner? How can I measure these video case stories in my business? I mean, okay. So I, if you go over into my YouTube channel and I'll give you the link to it, you, you know, if they're watching this and everyone should watch this on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed to Steve's YouTube channel, subscribe to it uh, because it's better to see everyone's faces and hear their mm -hmm. voices. Uh, but I'll put a link to it. There's a fish in the barrel strategy. So this is every business should do it. You've got all these clients swimming around your website. You know, you think that they just hit your website, then they go contact form, or whatever. No, they're going throughout your website. Your about us page is second most used page on the website. Amazing place to put case stories. Um, we did a, a Panda Doc, uh, a software company that does proposal software, did a study. Thirty video on proposals increases the conversion thirty two percent. So thirty percent more proposals converted. How's that for measurement? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, email nurture sequences, but generally, if you go through that fish and barrel st strategy, you know, people are doing a search for you, right? Everyone, like if first thing I want to get your name, what am I doing? I'm doing a Google search, seeing what you're about. You have your case stories showing up for your name. And you know, if you get one client every two years, depending on the value of it, let's say, um, you know, that can be easily a $400,000 return on investment. If you have a $10,000 client. Mm -hmm. Um, I just to talked to one of my clients who's an attorney who we did his five, six years ago. He's like, Oh, it's time for some new videos. Six years. He's like, they've been working still. We still get a lot of business. They, the people love them. And you know, so you talk about wow. ROI, like it's, it, it's, it's, but here's, you know, we all want ROI side note. Here's a great study. My friend Kasim over at solutions eight. One of the best, you know, PPC companies, pay per click, Google pay per click companies out there, top 1%, whatever. Took one of the video case stories that we created for them, put in the $200,000 a month on YouTube ads that they were spending for their agency. And their case story was the number one most effective ad, right? Uh, because it's a story in YouTube, it can rank for YouTube considers how long someone watches as well as the percent. People are going to watch stories, right? You watch a TV show. Versus like these crazy, like Mr. Beast, right? There are kind of stories. But yeah. the more view time you have and the longer the video, the more it's going to rank. So you can actually get these to rank really fast for tough search terms. So there's that SEO return on investment. I just got started using in sales, right? If you're doing outbound sales and you're like, hey, do you have this problem? Would you like me to show you how I helped Steve solve this problem? In a two minute video. Can I send that to you? It's really tough if someone has that problem to say no. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, those are just a few of the ways, you know, we've had help clients make millions of dollars off of a single video. I mean, I have a client who I think one of the videos was eight years old and just got a client that was a, like a $15,000 dental client from it. Uh, who said, that's just like me. So there's like 50 ways in my book. I talk about them, but the fish in the barrel strategy is the no brainer. 
10 places that you should be using them that every business should, that'll help your conversion rate massively. Yeah. And what I like, and this is why I'm so excited to have you on the show. You just talked about a few things, including your videos that I've been watching. There are no cost. You're putting your IP out there because you know, you're the, I talk about this a lot. People are like, I don't want to, they kind of, Hey, my IP, I'm not going to let it out. I'm not going to open the door, open it because they're going to need you. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, I'm, I'm attracting what I call the, the BMB clients, the bomb clients. What I, I want is someone that goes, bring me the best. All right. There's the DIYers, the DFYers. I want to help them. Generally, they're not going to be my clients. You know, there's mm -hmm. just those people that are always stuck there. Once in a while, there'll be the person that transverses, starts their business. And like, finally, I can afford to hire I am. But either way, you, you show your expertise. Folks, there's nothing new under the sun. It's just packaged different. So, you know, help, like, I think what you're doing is perfect. If you make your content, and this is what I think the future case story is. If you think about the story of the person that you want to help, and you're like, how am I going to help that person? What do I need to tell that person? And you make all your content just in the, as a gift, you're going to win. Yeah, that that's that's so true. And it's a servant heart mentality, too, which is why yeah. you're on serve. Because if the, few, the universe changes and things come and it's happened to me and I know it's happened to you because we've talked about it. The, the I call it the elephant in the room, AI. How does that <laughs> affect, you know, video case stories? I want to call them BCS, but yeah, it's not like VHS. VHS. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, it, yeah, I, I won't say it was intentional, but it does kind of look like, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, check out our website. It looks like my wife's an amazing designer. My wife is an amazing designer. The website looks like it's all 80s because she loves 80s. So um, I, it's fun. Uh, but what's the, the future with AI is interesting. So I'm going to give you, I haven't really talked about this in public. Here's my prediction. For it, I think that the stories will need will eventually be. I think YouTube will have a verification process for is this a real human and is this a real story, and you'll be able to see this is a verified. It might even be like like lie detector type tests, like hey, this person's telling the truth. We can tell it right by the modulation of their voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, is this a real face? Is this a real person? And there'll be a certification for that video. I think that's the future of it. But here's the other piece of the future of it. Your customer stories can literally inform AI, right? It says these, these you can be dumping your customer stories, stories, right? Testimonials, you say, oh yeah, everyone, you know, everyone thinks Steve's great. That's great, right? But no one really cares. Mm -hmm. But if it's a story, you, it will inform AI, create other content, say, hey, what other products should I be creating for this person? What else should I be helping tell this person to do? What else can I do for this person? You know, to your point, servant's heart. Use AI to help improve your service to that person's story. So mm -hmm. I think that's really the future of it. Yeah, that's powerful because there is the problem with the pictures and using people's voice and faking it and all that. That's, that's just a hell of an answer, Ian. It's pretty smart because that we got to fight that somehow. And Google seems to be ahead of the game with that. Marketing strategy with video case stories. Got to be a great one there. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think, I really think, you know, we have this thing called the case story tackle box. If you look on like the case on the website or on the um, YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, there's some videos on it. It's basically a place to strategize, collect all your stories and create a marketing strategy. It, the kit, like I said, the case stories will give you cold, warm and hot hooks. Because every person is cold, warm, or hot. You shouldn't be saying, telling the same version of the story to someone who doesn't know who you are, someone that has the problem, and someone who knows who you are. You tell different versions. So cold, warm, and hot hooks, you'll pull out of it. You'll find your positioning. Right? Like in EOS, they call it three uniques. Your customers will tell you your three uniques for your marketing. Um, and then, you know, just from a standpoint of grabbing people's attention, we're in an attention society. So you are going to get so much more attention if you have an amazing story with amazing hook. Like, I mean, one of my favorite copy ever is the, the uh, uh, it's a classic sales letter. It says, you know, I sat down to play at the piano and everybody laughed, but then I began to play. Right. And that, <laughs> like that hook, you're like, even if you don't want to learn how to play piano, you're like, well, what happened? And so yeah. those types of stories back to YouTube, second most used search engine, right? For every 10, we're experts in YouTube. I love YouTube. I've been doing that since the beginning. For every one minute someone spends on your website, they're going to spend 15 minutes on your YouTube channel. 
Wow. I mean, your website, if you look at your website, average time on site, it's about two minutes. Yeah. Right. So not only that, but if you're putting your customer stories in with your educational content and teaching them and converting content, it makes your YouTube channel more powerful, but also the stories rank, like I said, rank higher because they're getting more view time. They get more connection. You're going to make your website, your YouTube channel more converting. And if you're going after big clients, they're lurkers, right? So you, they're not going to, they're going to decide or not decide on you. So you can educate them. But when they see a story, another agency I worked with, like they got a massive, massive, like fortune 50 client who said, Oh yeah, I watched that one story of the other company that you helped and we wanted that, right? But you're not going to get the view time. Like you, you, you shouldn't be going for subscribers, right? You should be going for this view time of the person, the ideal person. So sending your stories out, using them email nurture, using them, I mean, trade shows, play them in the background with the text overlays because most trade shows are boring. You're going to stand out all these ways that you should be using them in marketing, but literally coming back to it, every marketing campaign, you should be starting with your case story tackle box, looking through and going, what does this person need? What's their journey? What are the hooks and angles that we have? Because if you want to do a Facebook ads or whatever, it starts there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, that's all I think about, so. <laughs> no, 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 you're the expert and that's, that's, I love this. And the other question I have, and I'm sure the audience has is, uh, you mentioned questions. You, you want to ask questions to pull out these video case stories. Is there any general questions that you always ask, or is it different for each person? We, I mean, you want to ask story-based questions. Who story are they? What, 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 the co connection, conflict, conclusion, the three story arc. Who are they? What was the problem? What was the process? How did it get solved? Um, but deeper into that, you want to get transformation questions. What is it like now? What is life like now? Um, and you want to dive into, you want to figure out where you're going with it, right? What do you want this to do? That's why we start always with what we call a, a GPS call goals, positioning and stories. What do you want these stories to do? Because, you know, it's, I, I, you know, I work with a lot of attorneys, we work with other agencies, but if you went to court and, you know, you're in a trial and your business is on trial, you know, you had this big litigation case, multi-million dollar litigation case, and in walked your, not just your, not your attorney didn't walk in, but his paralegal who just printed out some questions from the internet. How would you feel? You'd be pretty upset, right? Yeah. They, 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 I know attorneys, they work for months on these questions. Like, how are you going to ask it? When are you going to ask it? That's the same thing. You need to know what you want to get out of the person you know, like a great interview customizes the questions for where they want to go and like times it well. So we have standard questions, but we always customize it, um, you know, and decide what's the one or two things. Like if there's a specific piece of the story, do that. Now I'll give you a magic piece. So we talked about emotions, right? People are transported because decide because of moments and they decide because of emotion and you can transport them there. So when you get to that piece, like uh, the conflict piece, like let's say, you know, how'd you know your website was not working? Or how'd you know your, you know, your YouTube channel was not working? And it's like, we well, just spent $50,000 on videos and no one's watching them and they suck. And like, when did you realize that? Well, you know, when we sat down, wrote that final check and the videos did nothing. They're really pretty. No, we got no business from them. Well, how did that feel? Yeah, it felt pretty bad. I felt like YouTube was never going to work, right? moment so what was the moment that that happened and what how did that make you feel now that will get that emotion out of there but you, you can't say that right away and you got to be careful with those questions yeah but it is a powerful two part two parter that can really give you a great story no that's a great story because then you come in with your youtube expert and go hey here's a way we do it to make sure because you told me this your problem, your situation, here's what I can do. And boy, that fits right in, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, and you can use that in other videos. And then you use the case stories in other videos, other content. Yeah. Then not just stand alone, right? You weave them in. Yeah. No, everyone, every great speaker tells stories, but it's funny. But then we go into people's website content and they have zero stories in there. It's just like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Blah. I do this great. I do this great. I do this great. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, or like, here's how you do this thing. Right? Yeah, this, yeah. this this is how you get to the top of Google. 
not yeah. why do you want to be at the top of Google? Right. And that qualifies your people too. You put a, a testimony, uh, I just did a video case story for a particular thing that you've done. That's going to attract those people. And the people that don't fit your business, they're going to read that and go away. That's a good thing because you yep. don't want, they're not going to be a good client of yours. Exactly. Okay. Uh, exactly. I'm exactly. getting it now. <laughs> I, I've got to have part two of Ian. So if you're willing, I don't put you on spot on the show, but we, we there's much more to cover. We've run out of time. Um, I'd love to. Talk Anytime. about your book and and yeah. uh, we'll get the link to that I've been looking at in an audience. I told them I've been watching for a week. I've learned so much in the two hours I've listened, watched, that I have any other marketing I've done. So thank you for that. Well, that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, the book is Video Testimonials That Land the Big Fish. The first part of the book tells you why I, you don't want video testimonials, but uh, from an SEO standpoint, if you just Google video testimonial book, it's number one. So that's kind of what <laughs> that was the plan. Cause I'm like, most people are looking for video testimonials, but yeah, it's available on Amazon. I think it's 99 cents right now. Um, there's an audio book coming out as soon as Amazon uh, proves it. And uh, yeah, you can listen to my sexy sounds for, Beautiful. for four hours. <laughs> yeah. And I listen for two hours. So yeah, it's, it's, and it's the same guy. Trust me. There's no AI here. He is legit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's interesting, I'm going to end with this, is Big Fish, Tackle Box. Are you a fisherman? I am. I live on a lake and okay. well, I, I fish. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, so. I, I, I guess I'm pretty smart. I'm starting to pick this all up. I'm like, there's got to be a fish angle here, which is great. No, this is great. So how can people reach out to you? Because I know people are going to have questions. Yeah, sure. I mean, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, sure. Just let me know that they saw it me here or, you know. Uh, tag me comments on the YouTube channel. If you have a question, com comments on the YouTube below, tag me in it, go at Ian Garlic, and I'll come onto this video and answer any and all of your questions. Beautiful. I want to thank you for being on. This has been fantastic because video is all over the place. It's important, but you've kind of put it in a place that it needs to be. And, and I'm excited because this weekend I'm going to be busy with VCSs. That is awesome. for sure. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I appreciate that. And anything we can do to help, let me know. You bet. Thank you. And and audience, like I always say, Ian gave you a bunch of million dollar tips. These aren't thousand dollars. These are million dollar tips for your business. Watch the show over. Like he said, go back to the video, listen and watch again, because I know when you watch two or three times, you pick up different things or you understand better what Ian's talking about. And I get, I'm lucky I'm the host. So I get to hear it and, and be able to go through it too, but you have the ability to jump on YouTube. Don't forget my TV show every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. I'll have the link in the chat. We've got new Doing Business with Servants Heart swag, hats, shirts, T-shirts, hoodies, and all that. You'll find yes. that in the show notes as well. And I want to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you on the next episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. Thank you all.